Hey, good evening. My name is Megan Huntley and I am the producing artistic director for the Jane Doe Theatre Company. I just want to thank everyone involved with this project behind the scenes, on the screen that you'll see for your undying professionalism and determination and creativity, your beautiful creativity for sticking with us and creating this little piece of art that y'all get to watch tonight. Um, we did it y'all. <laughs> In the middle of a pandemic we still created something and artists all over the world and all throughout Texas State are working to continue to create in this crazy, crazy time. We hope to bring you things throughout this next coming years, no matter what the world holds. So thank you guys so much for being here, for doing this. Um, and thank you guys for watching on our brand new YouTube channel. We hope to continue to bring you more content through this new medium as well as in person when we get to be there. So thank you guys for everything you've done to get us here. Thank you to the people who helped create this. Thank you to the people who are helped watching it. You're just as important. So thank you and enjoy the show. Make sure to join us on Instagram Live right after this. Um, join us there on, at Jane Doe Theatre Company on Instagram for a talk back with the directors of the pieces that you will watch tonight. So. Thank you so much, um, and have a wonderful show. Break legs. <laughs>
Is it the color scheme? No, Velma, it's just, I'm a little uncomfortable with all the vaginas everywhere. I just think it's a little much. Vaginas are just a basic body part. Plus you came out of one, how are you uncomfortable? I personally don't think that it makes compelling art. I think if you added more artwork featuring males or anything else other than women, you have a greater amount of men who make up a large portion of the art critics and hunters coming in and buying the paintings. Alistair, it's not for them. This gallery is made for women, by women, many of them queer women. Most of the art depicts challenges faced by women over time and portray the body as it should be. Practically all male artists made the female body something simply to look at, but not to feel inside. It's super inspirational. This is a place of positivity and femininity. That's why I have my plaque. Oh, don't go on about your plaque again. When someone comes to me and announces that the art is all made by women before the end of the gallery, I will enlist them as my partner. I allow anyone that enters here the benefit of the doubt. The point of the audience is not to get exposure, it's to enlighten. I know, I know. All I'm saying is that you would get a lot more prestigious audience if you change some things. Well, I don't care about a prestigious audience. I care about an audience feeling heard and seen. Power is with the people, not the elite. Plus your logic doesn't make any sense. No one knows that this gallery is filled with art by women until they have finished the whole gallery. Anyone who enters signs the NDA at the end to make sure that the secret doesn't get out. If men decide that art made by women isn't good enough to fill a gallery, that's on them. I already got their money, but that doesn't matter to me. The gallery is always crowded. Do you know why? I mean, when you think about it. Cut the crap. It's because this gallery is fabulous. Why do you think we're planning to start another location overseas? We are that popular. You, we don't serve the male eye. I serve the female eye because it deserves a special place. If you think that men would make this place better, you aren't looking at it the right Velma, way. Velma, listen. If I come back here tomorrow and you're sleeping or doing anything that isn't working, I'm firing you and then kicking you out. With me leaving for London, I would be leaving you the whole house and the NYC gallery, but I'm through standing by your ass just for you to do nothing. I'm done, Alistair. One more time and you'll have to find new living arrangements and a new job. I understand this is a new job for you and that you're stressed. I also know it's hard not to be something you love. It's two. I'll give you until the end of the day at five to paint something. Also, since I'm feeling generous, if you paint a woman, I will see about putting it up in a special section of the gallery. Maybe someone will see it and have to buy it. Kickstart that career. But tomorrow, it's all work. Do you understand? Yes, I think I can paint a proper woman. I have a single in my dream, so maybe I could do her justice. How romantic. Uh, but that's fine. Now, I've got to actually do some work, so appreciate this time. My threat still stands. Velma actually leaves. Alistair immediately goes over to his easel and begins to sketch. We watch him start to see the woman from earlier. Scene two. Same space, but it's nighttime, perhaps around 9 p.m. Alistair lies on the floor near his easel. Painting is a bit more fleshed out. The woman at the start of the show returns covered in light. She is stunning. She stands near Alistair on the floor. Being the muse of history is not the most normal thing in the world. I have lived up until now and I will probably live forever after now. I have observed humans drawing horses on a wall with dirt and I have encountered humans who paint landscapes with the most exquisite oils. The transition to new ways to make art is so interesting to watch. Plus, since I am the oldest of the nine, usually they give me the most muse assignments. But that is also kind of strange. They never let you choose whose muse you are. You can always pray for the big ones like Shakespeare, but of course, he likes the moon. Who does not like the moon, you cretin? 
I expected him to be better. And as time goes on, you lose track of how many people you inspire. In my experience, I can say that I was the muse for the Statue of Liberty. But what a waste. The only people who care about that are tourists who take pictures for, how do you say, Facebook? Symbol of freedom, my ass. <laughs> At least that is some notoriety. Now I'm stuck here with this guy. She looks at the painting on the easel as if it were a mirror. Gods, I still look good. I guess that is some consolation. You know, lots of people look up to muses as things they would desire to be. Someone who is inspiring, nice to look at, sweet, smart. But those things are boring if you work all the time. Running around people's heads is not easy, but doing it constantly is a mess. We do not even get vacation days. All we get to do is go on the wildest ragers anyone could ever dream of with never ending wine and food. She stands and starts to twirl. All I have ever wanted to do was walk around the earth with humans. I have helped them for millennia and I wanna see firsthand just how much they have done. All the art, all the music, all the shows, it must be magical to see. And as silly as it is, I have always wanted to paint. It's so interesting to watch others do it when they paint me. I want to know what it's like to create. I have done a little secret practicing and I'm actually pretty good. I could be on earth and be the newest and greatest painter ever. But instead, I get to watch this guy paint me. Well, I never get to actually watch him paint. I really just get to watch him sleep. <laughs> Inspiration through dream is the worst type of assignment. At least he's pretty cute. However, in my history, an attractive man is usually an untrustworthy one. <clears throat> oh well. Maybe one day I will be able to tell him in person that he got my hips just right. <laughs> Maybe if I make a wish on some random star, I've seen humans do that before. I just hope Asteria does not tell everyone at the party this weekend that I did that. <laughs> Being a muse and praying to the goddess of stars? So embarrassing. Cleo closes her eyes and makes her wish. A gentle sparkling sound confirms that it's been received. <sighs> Back to work, I guess. Scene three. Same evening, but much later. Maybe around midnight. Alistair stands in front of the easel. The painting of Cleo is complete and it looks gorgeous. She looks gorgeous. Do you ever just stare at something for so long that you just can't get it out of your head. Of course, your move doesn't. But what if you create this thing that you've been staring at for so long? I always consider creating our godly, probably not in the traditional way. I mean, more in the sense of you are the creator of your work. You make every shade and tint you desire and with each stroke you paint, your image is seen in this creation. It's like you're, it's God. I never have I ever been so taken with a creation of mine. I might even go so far as to call it my God. He caresses the body in the painting. The woman's form in this painting touches me like no other form has real or fake. I can't help but think that the reason for this is that I made her myself. And in my image, I've seen bits and pieces of her over time. And now she's fully here, the perfect woman. Alistair finds himself uncomfortably close to the painting and he steps back, but only a little. I've seen it in my dreams, you know, for days, weeks even, dancing around like she had any care in the world. And when I look at her, I had one either. He finds himself looking out the window. <laughs> this is so cliche. I fully intend to regret this, but stars, 
I love this woman, the woman in the painting. I don't know why, I don't know how, but I've fallen for her. I've seen her in my head, so I guess in some reality she must exist. I guess, I just wish that she could be here with me and my life could be complete. He waits, nothing happens, embarrassment. <laughs> Jesus, I just wished on a bunch of stars. Cinderella would be so proud of me. He turns to go to bed. The stars brighten and the twinkle sound before from before is heard. The wish has been received. Almost immediately, a whirlwind is heard. Cleo bursts through the painting. She falls to the floor. What on earth? Alistair and Cleo look at each other. Oh, oh goodness, I am on earth. Uh, who the hell are you? Well, that's not a very nice way to speak to your dream woman. Alistair looks uh, from her to the painting and huh? back at her a couple times. Wait. You're the woman in the painting? Yes. Do I not look like her? Yes, yes, God, yes, you do. He runs to her and envelops her in a giant hug. She is shocked, but is not unwelcome. Whoa there. Hello to you too. You have no idea how happy I am to see you. I guess a dumb wish paid off. You wish for me? How strange. I wish to be on earth. And here you are. How did you even get here? I imagine that a portal opened up on Olympus and sent me here. Asteria and Iris do not usually work together, but it is sweet that they both decided to help me. They were probably just tired of hearing me complain. <laughs> I'm sorry, what? What? Uh, who are you? Oh, <laughs> how rude of me. I am Cleo, the muse of history. Uh, muse as in Greek muse. Yep. As in ancient Greece. Indeed. As in centuries ago. You seem to get it. Why keep elaborating? Uh, but how are you so young? <laughs> well, I suppose you are talking about my appearance. They show no age. Who would be inspired by a bag of bones? <laughs> so you're actually really old. Wow, what a charmer. No, no, that, that's, that's just absolutely fascinating. I'm in awe of you. Of course you are. That is the point. Of course. How many people have you inspired? Do you want to know the fullest? Nothing would delight me more. All righty. You may want to get comfy then. Scene four. A couple hours pass. The stars twinkle as music plays. Lights up on Alistair and Cleo, lying on the floor, holding hands deep in conversation. They've talked the whole time. So in the end, he was more inspired by the moon than anything else. Wow. Shakespeare doesn't really sound like a smart guy. No, he was just misguided. The great poet thought he could change the matronly status of Artemis, which clearly did not work out. That's incredible. You are so impressive, so interesting and eloquent. Why? Did you think I would be boring and intriguing? Not really. I just thought you might have been since you're so pretty. Lots of pretty women are just that, pretty. I, I can't wait to tell Velma all of this. She'll be stunned. She loves this stuff. Who is Velma? Ah, uh, my sister. She owns the art gallery I work at. That is wonderful. A woman owning a gallery? Humans have progressed so far. I guess. She's actually leaving to set up another installment in London, so I don't think she'll be around to pester me much longer. She's giving this one to me. Good for her. And I suppose good for you as well. I hope so. Anyway, she loves anything that has to do with magic. She's one of those mythical bitch lesbians. A lesbian? Running an art gallery all about women? I am not sure I've heard of anything more powerful. I don't really like it. 
what do you not like? The lesbian fact or the gallery fact? Because I, for one, love everyone. I'm sure you have a word for it. Do you have a problem with that? Uh, no, no, not not the lesbian thing or your thing. That's that's actually kind of hot. I, I mean, the gallery. It's just, isn't it a little obsessive? I mean, the whole thing is about the female experience in a female form. Isn't that just a bit sexual? Well, what about all the other galleries of art made by men portraying naked women everywhere? At least a gallery of about women made by a woman, even if she is a lesbian, would be a lot more respectful. Fair. Anyway, why did you summon me? Hmm? I, I suppose I wonder why I am here. What was so meaningful about me that brought me here? Well, I was just painting and I remembered you from my dream. I just. I just couldn't get your beauty out of my head. My beauty? Of course, don't you know how stunning you are? I suppose, I just thought you would, Never mind. Uh, speaking of, I think I would like to paint you in person. Now? Uh, yes, of course. I want to paint you in all of your glory. That is nice, but I would like to explore. I am on earth. I want to see it. No. I, I mean, nowhere's open right now since it's so late. It, it would be a good way to pass the time. So, you know, let me get to know you better. If you say so. How do you want me? Anywhere and everywhere. I mean, right there. Sorry, gorgeous. Alistair situates himself in front of his easel and puts up a new canvas facing away from the audience. Just pose for me. Uh, something thoughtful? Something strong? Something a little sexy? She turns to a profile for Alistair. She leans down a little suggestively and looks back at him. Perfect. Scene five. Scene shifts to morning after 8 a.m. Alistair sleeps in his chair by the easel, brush and palette on the ground by his hands. Cleo has been looking out the window for hours. Good morning. What time is it? Well, time is a construct created by humans, so I'm not sure. <laughs> It's after eight. Is this early for you? Uh, no, not really. I usually have to get up earlier than this to prepare for work. Ah, uh, yes. Humans have to work to survive. How tragic. Yeah, working at that gallery is quite tragic. You should take me there. Well, we're actually already here. This is my office. Oh, why did you not tell me? I have got to see it. No, Cleo, you should be spending time with me. You're my muse. We should paint even more, not explore. I, I, uh, I also don't really like to be in there. It makes me uncomfortable. Plus, I'm in the same clothes as yesterday. Please. I want to see if anyone there was inspired by me. I must know. All right. But we, we can't go for long. I only want to focus on you. Let us go. Are you going to get dressed first or at all? Cleo wears a silky outfit in the painting. Oh, that is right. You humans are obsessed with being conservative with your bodies, if you say so. He goes to a drawer and hands her a hoodie and shorts. I work out in these after work usually. I hope they're all right. This is not the best that fashion has to offer, but I suppose it will do. She dresses and Alistair looks at her, incredibly taken with her. Lights up as they enter the gallery. Scene six. The two enter the gallery. It's not open. Velma stands next to the desk on a phone call. Cleo admires the art while Alistair stands stiffly with his hands in his pockets. Wow, it is better than 
I could have ever imagined. There is so much of it in one place. I, um, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> I love it. This is stunning, is it not? Honestly, the hint at the vaginal structure is fantastic. Of course. Velma hangs up and comes over to the two. Alistair, early I see, but you haven't changed. Strange. Uh, and who is this? We don't allow people in the gallery when it's not open. I am Cleo. <laughs> you must be Velma. I've heard so much about you. She was in here last night. Oh. Is this the dream girl who you've been thinking about? Yes, Velma, don't be embarrassing. Sorry, I am incredibly underdressed. Uh, That's we all were right. That's all right. Uh, you look comfy. And because Alistair hasn't had any luck lately, I will allow it. Velma! What? I'm surprised you caught such a stunning woman. I just hope you spent some time painting. I, I did, actually. I'll go grab the painting after I show Cleo around a little bit. She wanted to see the art. Wonderful. I'm glad that you're excited to see the art. I decided to close the gallery today to set up for the move tonight, but that doesn't mean you get out of work, Alistair. Velma turns to Cleo and talks to her warmly, taking her hand. Let me know what you think of the art, Cleo. And be careful with that one. Velma! <laughs> Of course, enjoy your day. You as well. Velma lets go and exits, smiling to herself. Alistair takes Cleo's hand instead and leads her to the first couple exhibits. An impressionist painting of a woman staring out a large window and a marble bust of an ancient queen. So, seems like you two got along well. Did you think we would not? Not at all. I guess I just know Velma can get catty. I imagine she's just trying to protect her place and her art. And who would not? This painting is stunning. It's a copy of Les Ponts au Table Rouge by Beth Monsoir. She painted this in the late 1800s. How did you know that? Oh, uh, Velma makes us memorize the paintings as we cycle them through. She does monthly exams and they suck. She just wants you to be informed so you may inform others. That does not seem like too much to ask. You always look on the bright side of life, don't you? Where were you during this time? Oh, I was keeping an eye on Bingo. I used to be his muse, but as he slipped further into madness, that became his muse. I stayed around until he died to try and help. Wow. That's so kind of you. I, I guess you could say that I have some of my own mental issues that you could help me with. Tortured artist and all. Perhaps we can work on it if it is that severe. Though, if I may, I think your issues lie more in your ego than your mind. Cleo approaches the bust of the queen and admires it. You can see just how regal this woman is. She is very gorgeous, but also so strong. Uh, that was made by Harriet Hosmer. It actually was of a queen, Zenobia, queen of Palmyra, to be exact. Alistair stops and turns to her. What? Wait, what, what made you think that? What makes me think what? About my ego and my mind. Well, from your history, it seems that you create problems to fuel you and your art. You have placed yourself as the outsider of a loving and forgiving family so you can have a background worthy of pain-based art, which is the only art you find important. You live off of your sister and her success while trying to catch your own. You blame her, except you struggle with the painful aspect of it because you have never suffered enough to create that important type of art. I, I, I don't necessarily think it's that important. Cleo walks further through the gallery, seeing more art and continuing. Alistair follows. That is why you dislike the gallery. This art is made by powerful women who sometimes make art out of pain, but also choose to rise above it and make art from their power. You see this as insignificant, 
that is a privilege. I just don't feel comfortable with anatomy thrown in my face. I mean, what's the difference between the painting of a woman having their nipples out, showing, and men having their dicks out everywhere? I just don't get it. Not all of this art features female anatomy. There are many that are still life, surrealist. Some are just lines on a canvas, but none of them feature male pain. This is what makes you uncomfortable. Perhaps you should pay more attention to this art to make your own. Alistair stays silent for a while, but he finally takes Cleo's wrist somewhat forcefully. He brings her close to his face. Just because you're my muse doesn't mean you can treat me this disrespectfully. I brought you here on Earth so you could show me some respect. People don't understand my art because it's not simple. It is complex and takes a particular eye. You must not have it if you really think those things about me. I would do a little more standing there and looking pretty than being a critic. Does that make sense to you? He takes her hand and starts walking around the gallery again. Good. Glad you understand. They walk off stage. They continue the rest of the gallery in silence for the morning. Scene seven. The room is tense. It is afternoon. Alistair and Cleo sit on the bench by the art. Cleo sits silently, lost. Alistair eats a sandwich. Velma returns. Velma, hey. Alistair, what did I tell you about eating near the art? I know, I know. I, I just wanted to tell you that Cleo loves the gallery. That's wonderful. I'm glad you do. I hate to break this up, but we are moving very soon. Alistair, where's your painting? You said you'd bring it to me hours ago. Oh, shit, I forgot, I'll, I'll get it. While you're getting it, clean up a bit. And when I say a bit, I mean exponentially more presentable. Use the director's washroom. And for the love of whatever is holy, shower. Alistair rolls his eyes and exits to the office. The women are left alone. I'm honored you like the art, Cleo. I stayed behind and watched you observe the first painting. You look like you have a sharp eye. Oh, thank you. Leon Font is one of my personal favorites. That's why it's first. It is beautiful. Is something wrong, Cleo? You don't seem as happy as you did earlier. No, no, I, I am all right. What did he do? What? What did Alistair do? How do you know it was him who upset me? I recognize the look of a woman who was just belittled by a man. And unfortunately, Alistair has a history of belittling. I thought he was working on it, but people rarely seem to change. What did he do to you? It is a little bit of a long story. You have work to do. <laughs> hey, Christy. Everyone can go home for tonight. Close things up for me and I'll finish up my leftover packing. Something important's come up. Velma sits next to Cleo. Velma faces towards her. You have my full attention. Alistair mentioned earlier that I stayed here overnight. He never said how I got in. You see, I am a muse from all the way back in ancient Greece. I wish for a life on earth and Alistair wished for his muse to be real. A moment later, I sprung from his painting alive and well. We talked for hours until he wanted to paint me. After that, we went out to visit the gallery. After we spoke to you and started looking, I made a comment about his desire to be a true artist and how I did not think that this was a good idea. He then proceeded to grab me by the wrist and tell me to just sit and look pretty for him to paint since I am his muse. He just scared me. He seemed almost nice until then. Cleo, I am so sorry. Sometimes my brother can be an absolute piece of shit. Your job of serving him doesn't mean he should get to treat you like that. I am going to fire his ass. No, no, you do not need to do anything. Are you kidding? He needs to be put in his place. Leave it alone, please. Cleo, please. Please. 
if that's what you want, I'll honor it. Is there anything I can get you? What do you have? Lots of things. I'm not sure what you have in mythical muse land. Also, can I backtrack and say that that is the coolest thing in the world? <laughs> like, seriously, I am in awe of that. Alistair said you would like my history. We don't need to talk about him. For now, at least. May I ask you a question? Of course, anything at all. How did you make this gallery? I created it using a bit of money, a bit of grit, and a bit of beauty. I worked hard and here we are. I've got another gallery opening in London this week. Ah, uh, yes, I heard. I postponed it opening for the longest time because I kept looking for something, but I never found it. The world doesn't wait for people to have the perfect storm, so I had to get moving. What were you looking for? Well, there's a secret to this gallery that makes it so special. I am waiting for someone to mention it before they finish the gallery so that they can become my new partner. I even made a plaque to always remind me. Wow. I can see why you wanted to wait. Yeah. I even wished for someone to figure it out last night so I could leave for London with my new partner. I guess some of us aren't so lucky. Do you mind if I ask what the secret is? It wouldn't be much of a secret then, would it? I suppose so. I am not sure what it is, but I do want to commend you on your commitment to women. What? It is just inspiring to see all this work done by women in one place. I do not think people give women enough credit for the legacy of art. Excuse me, what? Did you just say all this work was done by women? Of course. It is a bit obvious. And you knew that just from looking at the art. Did anyone tell you? Is that supposed to be the secret? How did you know it was all by women? Well, I suppose I could just tell by the way the female form is painted. I mean, look at this one. This woman is just standing in her kitchen, but not doing any sort of work. She is just watering the flowers. Her eyes say that she loves those roses. The woman in the painting simply is living. She's doing something for her. It is not for any gaze. Only a woman would paint another woman in a natural habitat without making her some sort of sex symbol. It is practically screamed in my face that this was done by a woman. Cleo, you are amazing. I didn't even think about your history. Of course you knew, you wonderful muse, you. Uh, did you know any of them? I know this artist personally. I was her muse. I was the muse for one, two, six, eight of the pieces just in this vicinity. They like to give me the women artists to inspire because of my love for them. Most of the muses like to gawk at the men that paint them, but women do not get the attention they deserve, especially artists. Their talent just fascinates me. So I gawk at the women just as much as the men, if not more. Cleo, I don't know if I could even explain to you how glad I am that I met you. I want you to go to London with me. Velma, I could not. Why not? Alistair. You have to come. You wanted to live a life on Earth. I can give you one. Velma takes Cleo's face in her hands. One that doesn't involve being someone's play toy. I... I want to go with you. And come with me. What about Alistair? Oh, fuck him. He wouldn't know how to treat a woman right if every one of them punched him in the gut. Treat a woman right? I thought we would be partners. Oh, oh yes, partners, of course. I got a little ahead of myself. Did you want something else? I definitely want a partner to help me run my gallery. But you would also like a different kind of partner? I, I don't know. I mean, I guess it would be nice eventually. Do you mean me? Velma blushes and runs a hand through her hair. 
Cleo, you're kind of putting me on the spot here. I think it would be nice to finally be with someone, especially someone who appreciates and loves something that I have lived my whole existence for as much as I do. I suppose I could give it what you humans call a, a shot. So you'll come? Of course. The women are both blushing regarding each other's closeness. May I kiss you? You may. The women kiss tenderly, excitingly. The moment feels like smelling warm cookies. They pull away, but stay close. I suppose that counts as my first kiss. I hope to help you experience so many first things. I trust that you will. Shit, I've got to get ready for the flight. Are you coming? I should talk to Alistair, just to be kind. All right. I'll uh, go home and get everything into the limo. Are you sure you don't want to come with me? As much as I would love to, I, I have to do this. Plus, I do not have anything to pack. I'll pack you a suitcase if you don't mind wearing my clothes. That sounds wonderful. Go. You need to prepare for the trip. I will talk to Alistair and wait here for you. Okay, if you're sure. I'll pick you up on the way to the airport as soon as I can. I'll honk and you can come outside. Wonderful. Okay. I'll see you soon. Good luck. Velma goes to leave, but turns around and looks back at Cleo. You know, maybe that wish that brought you here was mine, to be my partner. So let yourself live the life that you want. Velma goes off stage, and Cleo, shocked and giddy and nervous, goes into Alistair's office. Scene eight. Alistair's office. Alistair is already inside. He is much cleaner than before and he is holding the painting, presumably ready to go out into the gallery. Oh, hey, sorry for taking so long. I'll go show this to Velma. He hugs her. She doesn't hug back. Are, are you all right? Did I miss something? No, nothing grand. I talked with Velma, she offered me a job. We looked at the- Wait, wait, wait what? Oh yes, she wants me to come to London with her to work for the gallery. Why on earth would she want you to do that? She said I was special and that I knew the secret. Yeah, does she know how special you are that you aren't even human? Yes, in fact, I told her and she thought it was wonderful. Well, you can't go. What? You live with me, you're mine. Excuse me? Velma is picking me up tonight. I'm waiting for a car horn and I'm out of here. Are you deaf? You will be living with me. You belong to me. You're my muse. I have been muses to many other people than you. What has gotten into you? Alistair grabs her neck. Cleo stands still but is frightened and angry. Well, sweetheart, right now you are my muse. And whether you like it or not, that's the truth. On top of that, the only reason you're here on earth like you wanted to be is because I wish you to be here for me. Your future here is all thanks to me. I really should force you to stay with me because it was my wish, but I think you should feel obligated enough to stay with me since I basically gave you everything you ever wanted. If you try to go with Velma tonight, I will make sure you never see the light of day again. I, I mean, really, I don't even see why you want to go. You get to stay with me. And I plan on making all your dreams come true. He moves her hand close to his crotch, but she pulls away. You know, Velma mentioning my sex life made me think about how I didn't even try to see that fantastic body of yours last night. I can always get something in quick before going to sleep tonight. Are you upset? Cleo struggles. Her frown changes into a smile, a steely one. Of course not. I am so sorry for saying those things. I was so wrong. You saved me. I should be thanking you. Then do it. Thank you. 
Alistair. Are you going with Thelma? No. Like music to my ears. Sketch on the desk. I want to see that beautiful body a bit less clothed again. Clue's music plays. He takes her to the desk, releasing her neck, but taking her wrist again. He sits in his chair and she stands in front of him. He removes her hoodie and shorts, leaving her in the outfit from the painting and pulls her down to kiss him. She does so. Alistair pulls her onto his lap. She sits, straddling him and looks at the audience as Alistair kisses her neck. Lights go blue. He kisses her more. Some sort of sexual something is performed or we should get the idea that it is. Afterwards, Cleo stands leaning against the desk. She cries as she stares at the painting, conflicted. Alistair falls asleep at his desk. Cleo sits exhausted and falls asleep against the desk. Scene nine. Time passes. It's evening. Cleo wakes up and checks her watch. We hear Velma's car horn. She sees Alistair at his desk asleep and stands. She comes towards the audience. What do you do when you want something more than the world, but you are chained down by obligation? How do you choose whether to stay with what is given to you or go with something that is offered to you? Do you trust the promise of stability or excitement? I should think going is the right choice and I want to with my whole heart, but I have him to deal with. She looks at Alistair, another car horn. Obligation should not hold me back from this chance that the gods gave me to do great things. She hears the car horn once more and decides to leave for certain, risks or not. She goes for the door but sees the painting. She takes the painting and she looks at Alistair one more time before she leaves the room. You masquerade as a good man, but you are not. I hope you never know another moment's pleasure. That will be my own inspiration. The stars twinkle and shine brighter than we've seen them before in approval. She notices and smiles as she leaves. The lights go down as we see Alistair shift and look up from his desk. Yeah. In absolute black and absolute loneliness. Cleo. End of play. Lights up on the small humble living room of a country home. The place looks fairly dated, but its decor is modern and up to date. A titter of two young girls is heard from outside. The front door swings open and the girls enter, Ellie holding an official looking envelope tightly in her hands and Ava hot on her heels. The two continue to chat as they throw their bags down and make themselves at home after a long day at school. Come on, Ellie, just open it. No, no, I can't. Can show you how? Just put your hands on the envelope like this. Ava, I can't literally open it. just showed you again. Hands on the. I'm too nervous. You shouldn't be nervous. You know what? Now that you've said that, it's completely gone. You've cured every worry I had. What a miracle! Fine, if you don't do it, then I will. Oh, absolutely not. <laughs> I'll open it for you. Easy peasy. Come on, hand her over. Hello. Earth to Eloise. Hello. So we're just gonna stare at the thing? Try to read its mind? Stop, just let me settle in first. This is an important moment. Settle in? 
How much does it take for you to rip open a fucking envelope? There should be no settling involved. Shh. Just let me find my zen. Yeah, no, it's not happening. I can't do it. You're killing me. Seriously, what's the worst that could happen? Uh, I get rejected. Uh, there's that, but so what? Oh, wait, there's more. I get rejected from Northwestern, my number one most top dream school, and then my rejections from ASU, Boston University, Duke, and Penn State follow quickly after. Oh, no, 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 no. I know what you're going to say. But Ellie, you still have ballet, right? Wrong. Sure. I join ABT and I become the prima ballerina of my mother's dreams. I pirouette my way to the top and dance with them for a maximum of, I don't know, let's be generous, maybe 25 years. And they force me to retire before I'm 45. And now I have to make a living doing God knows what completely alone for the rest of my life because whoops, I forgot to make time to have kids. And you know, like menopause, they eventually die in my studio apartment with only my cats to attend my funeral. A total wash up, a loser. And that, my friend, is the sweet reality of the dance industry. That is the worst that can happen. Well, I guess you should go on and open that up so you can start prepping for your future as a sad, lonely, chubby cat lady. I never said chubby. I know, I did. Fine. Hmm. Fine, I'll do it. I mean, you know what they say, there's no time like the present. All I have to do is rip open this envelope and take out the letter and carefully and slowly unfold it and read the first word and the second word and maybe the Jesus third. Christ. No, no way, please. Northwestern University's Committee of Admissions has evaluated your application, and it is our pleasure to welcome you to the class of 2006. Oh my God! Oh my God! Oh my God! I got in! I'm gonna I'm going to Northwestern. I'm gonna be a wildcat. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I can't believe it. I don't even know what to do with myself. Celebrate ice cream Sundays. What would I do without you? Eat way less ice cream. True, and maybe I'd be better off. My thighs definitely would be. Oh, I don't want to hear it, Miss Twiglegs. I could literally break you in half. A bowl of ice cream here and there can't hurt you when you're burning like seven million calories every day dancing. You would wither away without me. Oh shit, I forgot I gotta be there early tonight. I should start getting ready and I think the Sundays will have to wait. Dancing after six scoops won't be pretty for anyone. Hmm. Ava. My mom. What about it? I gotta tell her. You say, hey mom, I got into Northwestern. And she'll probably cry. She writes Northwestern, some big fat check. Shit. I'm not seeing the issue here. She doesn't know. I'm sorry? She doesn't know I applied to Northwestern. Ellie. Were any of those schools, actually? Ellie! Yeah, it never came up. It never came up, are you for real? Well, how was I supposed to tell her? Oh, hey mom, you know that perfect plan you mapped out for my life since the day I was born? Yeah, that one. I actually just ripped it up and spat on it and threw it in the garbage. Love you though, what's for dinner? Well, you've got to tell her. I know. She's gonna freak. Trust me, I know. Maybe it won't be that bad? I know my mother and it's gonna be bad. Let's just hope she doesn't disown me. Oh, why am I disowning you? Mom! I am. <laughs> Hi, girls. How are you, Ava? I'm fine, Mrs. Cunningham. How was school? Great. Fine. It was all right. Just your average day. Yeah, nothing out of the ordinary. You sure it was okay? You girls are acting pretty strange. They served some weird mystery meat in the cafeteria today. Had some funky looking mushrooms. Ugh, gross. So nasty. So am I disowning you because you ate some sketchy cafeteria shrooms? <laughs> uh, no, uh, actually, I- She failed. She failed a math test, a calculus test. Failed it real bad, real hard. Oh, oh, yeah, you got me. I failed the calculus test. I'm sorry, Mom, I know you're disappointed. Honey, that is so unlike you. 
Are you falling behind? Do we need to get you a tutor, or should I talk to your teacher? No, no, don't. Seriously, it's fine. It was just a really hard one, hardest of the semester. And I'll do some extra credit and bring it up, no worries. Okay, sweetie, but if you need help, just talk to me and we can get you some tutoring or something. Thanks, Mom. Uh, actually, you know what? I need to head out for dance. I'm supposed to be there early tonight. Yeah, and I just remembered my mom wants me home. Right now, pronto. I'll give you a ride. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much. Okay, uh, later moms. Love you, bye. Uh, okay, love you too. Hey honey, how was dance? Fine, same as always. Yeah. Yep. I started looking at apartments for you today. Cool. Oh, I forgot how expensive New York City is. Yeah. Your dinner's in the oven, if you want it. I think I'm good. You sure? I made big ziti. <laughs> it sounds good, but no thanks. Are you feeling okay, sweetheart? Yeah, I'm just not hungry. You don't think you're getting sick? No, 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 I feel fine. I just had a big lunch. Mystery meat and mushrooms. <laughs> I'm sorry you had a hard day. It's fine. It really wasn't too bad. You shouldn't worry about that test. Your grade will be fine. I'm sure you can get extra credit. Soon you'll never have to think about calculus again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Are you sure dance was okay? Did one of those girls comment on your weight? I can call Madam Kimman and give her a piece of my mind if she said anything to you. No, oh, Mom. She was fine. It was fine. I always knew she was a bad egg. She can't keep throwing comments around like that. You should eat. She didn't. I'm just not hungry. I can have her out of her job by tomorrow. She has no right. Mom. You're a future ABT ballerina, for Christ's sake. Mom. Be honest, honey. Don't be afraid to tell me if something happened. Can I be completely 100% honest? Of course. And you promise you won't be mad? No, of course not. I, I don't. Honey, you're scaring me. What is it? I don't want to do ABT. <laughs> what? I don't want to do ABT. Eloise. I'm not doing it. What happened in class? Nothing. I've just been thinking about it. And I'm I've calling been... Madam Kidman. She's been running a sweatshop of a company for too long. Oh, Madam Kidman didn't say anything, but you listen to me. Don't talk back to me. Well, you're not listening to me. I've been listening to you and you still haven't told me what happened, so go ahead. Nothing happened at dance. No one said or did anything. I just, I'm making this decision on my own and I'm not doing it. You think you get to make that decision? I'm 18, I can decide for myself. I'm not doing it. Ellie, this isn't an option. What do you mean? We can't afford for you not to do ABT. You know I have some money saved, but it's not going to carry us over long. Okay, so I'll get another job, regular job. You have a job lined up and you're not throwing it away. Yeah, and I'll have a great one until the ripe old age of 27. And what am I supposed to do after that? What did you do? I mean, you could never even stand the thought of a regular job because being a ballerina blew your head up so much that you think everything is beneath you. Do you know how much I sacrificed for you? I know, and I'm grateful. It's you're not. If you were, you wouldn't be disrespecting me like this. How is deciding what I want to do with my own life disrespecting you? It is your dream. I never wanted this. I mean, maybe I did when I was little, but not anymore. And no, you love to dance. You love ballet. What? And you're so good. You could be a star. Just think of the life you could have. You could be a household name. I don't want it. That's not the life I want. And then what do you think you want? I want to go to college. I want to be a journalist. I've really thought about it. And I just don't want to do only dance. That's not all that I am. I can do more than that. You think that college is going to pay for itself? I can barely afford your dance classes. I don't need your money. I'll work. Plus, they already offered me a scholarship. Ellie, you know you need this. We need this. I can spend whatever extra money I earn from working back home, and maybe I can help you find a job, too. This could work. 
Why would you do this to me? This is your fault. You always put too much pressure on me. You know, I would have said something sooner, but everything with you is always ballet, ballet, ballet. And it's the only thing that was keeping us together. Because it's in your blood. It's who you are. I was just bringing it out of you. Everything is lined up. Everything is perfect. Why are you ruining this now? You know what, Mom? I'm sorry. I'm sorry I can't live up to everything you wanted. I'm sorry you can't live through me. I'm sorry that now you have to come to terms with the fact that your dancing is in the past. I won't let you force this on me anymore. I don't want it. You need to move on. Go to your room. You can't just shut me down like that. This isn't going to go away. I'm your mother and I'm telling you to go to your room. Just because you're my mother doesn't mean you can order me around. Not anymore. We are two grown women and we're going to stay down here and we're going to fight until you listen. Fine. I'm listening. I got into Northwestern. You didn't even apply. I got my letter in the mail today. And I went to open the letter and I was terrified because I was scared I'd get rejected because I'd be forced into the future you stuck me with. But I was terrified that I'd get in because I'd have to tell you and I'd have to admit this incredible accomplishment to my own mom like it was some kind of dirty little secret. I had to open my letter without you. And the saddest part is I didn't even want you there. Allie, I just want to be honest with you, mom. I'm coming clean. I'm confessing my dirty little secret. I'm going to Northwestern. It doesn't matter. We can't pay for it. It's not possible, Eloise. You can't pay for it or you just don't want to pay for it? Give me an inch here, Mom. Even if I thought this was the right choice for you, which it is not, there's no way I could ever afford to send you, especially at Northwestern. Well, I applied to a bunch of other schools. Maybe one of them will give me a really big scholarship or a full ride. We can work this out. You won't be needing this. Mom, no! I'll be calling the school tomorrow to let them know that you will not be attending in the fall. You are going to Northwestern and that's final. What is wrong with you? I am only doing what is best for you. Best for us, best for this family. I'm sorry, sweetie, but this is the only way. Helen exits, living Ellie alone on stage. She picks up the remains of the letter and crumples into the ground. Lights fade to black, end of play. Hi, it's me again. I just want to thank everybody again for watching this, for doing this. We're so excited to have you and we're so excited to bring this to you. But the night's not over, so if you guys would like, please join us on the Instagram for an Instagram Live talk back with the directors of these pieces as we ask them questions about their process and about what inspired them to continue to make these pieces and what stood out to them what were the piece what were the parts of these pieces that meant so much to them so please join us we're excited to see you there um and thank you again have a wonderful night and a wonderful holiday